Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Let's draw the skull of Pinacosaurus. Let's first pin down the top, bottom, left and right positions of the skull in the picture, and then draw a center line to make it easier to draw the left and right parts evenly. Let's begin with the mouth. First, draw the two bones on both sides of the center line that make up the beak at the front of the mouth, namely the premaxilla. Next, draw the peculiar outline of the nose, which has two bumps at the center seam, and two thick bones like arches at the top of the nose, followed by the lateral bones, which are roughly shaped like this. The nasal bones of many ankylosaurids were wildly exaggerated, especially in the case of Pinacosaurus, which had such a large nostril. Next, let's draw the maxilla, which is roughly like this. Then draw the lacrimal bone, which formed the anterior outline of the eye. Then, let's draw the postorbital bone, and the huge horn growing out of it, which formed the posterior of the eye. Its jugal bone, which formed the underside of the eye, had a very thick and large jugal horn. After that, we can shade the inside of the eye. And then draw some traces of large and small armor plates atop its head. Now let's draw the lacrimal bone on the opposite with reference to this side, and the short horn of the postorbital bone. This side of the lacrimal bone is about here, only a small part is visible. Next, we draw the beak in front of the mandible downwards, followed by the mandible backward which had a very thick, blade-like structure in this position. When it was alive, the keratin covered here could protect the lower jaw. We can draw its teeth here, and apparently, its mandible is very thick. One of the important features of Pinacosaurus is the interior of its nostrils, which have many openings. First, here is a large nostril, we can fill it in black. These two openings were directly connected to the main nostrils. Next, let's draw many openings below the nostrils, which become smaller and smaller. Also here, and here. In this position, it becomes larger, which is also a unique feature of this dinosaur. Then, let's draw some small holes like this on its beak, which were used to supply nutrients to the keratin on the surface. After that, we can draw some textures on this keratinous area, such as the tip of the jugal horn, In the eye sockets, we can paint them dark. We can also draw some textures on the horns above the eye, because the bones with keratinous structures are often somewhat rougher. Then in the raised structures on the skull, we can shade the edge slightly to make each bone look more three-dimensional.
on this side of the keratin, especially the gap between every two large plates, we can add a little shading. With only a few strokes, we can give it a stronger sense of volume. In front of its mandible, we can draw some shadows imposed by the block of the premaxilla. In these recessed positions, we can add some short lines like this to make this part more three-dimensional. In this way, we've finished drawing the skull of Pinacosaurus.